Hey, so today I am installing the Kabunk. It's the bunk bed system that attaches to the front seats and these vertical poles. Uh, I think it's the only one like it. The other, other alternative that I was considering was an inflatable lower bunk that went uh, in front of the seats. Um, it would tuck around here and inflate. And I just didn't like the idea of that because, you know, everybody's had experiences with their mattresses going flat in the night. This one seemed a little more foolproof and less prone to having issues like that. So um, anyway, this one requires no drilling, which I also like. Uh, it all collapses into a bag, uh, it's just a, a cylindrical pouch to put all of it in. Um, and if when I, ours came, I think a little tangled and I was really frustrated with getting it installed. There were one of the straps was, looped up in a weird way and I was about to toss the whole thing in the trash <laughs> but uh, anyway kind of took a breather looked at the one side that appeared to not have an issue and was able to get it all straightened out uh, not a big deal but um, just be prepared if yours comes and the straps are a little twisted uh, don't panic just I'll show you how this goes together here so you can use it as a reference um, so these poles here it looks like 8020 aluminum um, it's they're they do have uh, a bit here that can you can extend it out of this lower section just unscrew the phillips head and raise it up and then each of these loops is a phillips head that you can loosen and, and adjust it up and down um what i did was before even putting these poles in place because you don't know where they need to be till you get the, the bunks in place uh, i went ahead and got the bunks figured out um, you just drop them over the headrests and um and then start adjusting the straps on the back side here and they use the seat belt material which you know, really strong stuff. And then some additional um, Velcro loops. There's four of these just for extra support. And then you use your, you spin the seats around and you use your seat controls to tighten it up, right? You kind of recline the seats and it starts to snug it up. Um, one thing I notice is the top one is going to be more snug than the bottom one, just because the seats are reclining this way and there's no way to um, cinch this up this way that I have figured out anyway. So maybe there's a way and I just haven't, I don't know how to do that yet, but anyway. Um, so um, gonna go over how the straps work here. So this one here, there's one on each side. This loops up and it goes over, over the headrests, okay? And it goes through, um, I can see, and there you're gonna see a little loop, okay? It goes through that, it comes out right here and then just loops back on the bar to itself. Um, this lower bunk could go lower, but there's not enough of the Velcro, right, the hook and loop here. I've only got about this much overlapping. I don't really want to go any shorter than that to let it drop because it just wouldn't be as much support. It may be not a big deal with these extra ones, uh, but I wish they had made this the pokier side, whatever you call that. I wish they had made that go clear down to here because then you could lower this down and because these straps have plenty of adjustable adjustability but the big one just doesn't go as far. So a little disappointing that that wasn't that way because that would have let that bar drop down and the whole thing could be down. Now, when you're sitting on it, of course, you don't want to bottom out probably on the seats. So I would only drop it probably another inch or two, but that'd still be nice. So you're not quite as claustrophobic here with the top. Um, and the top one can't really go any higher, just the way it's designed, all you do. So, so these loops are really to level it out from where it has to be on this side, um, if that makes sense. So once you get it where it's as low as you can get it, all right? You just make all these straps kind of tightened about the same amount. They're just, they're just all looping around the bar. Uh, but like I say, when I got this one, this strap here was like zigzagging through the loop up here and back down. It was just a really weird configuration. And I, I thought, I didn't, I didn't know what I was gonna <laughs> do with it. But once you see how it goes together, it's really not too bad. Um, and so you kind of start with your seats upward and drop it on there and then tighten it up a little bit, come over here. Uh, get these bars kind of roughly in place. You don't have to attach them. All they give you is some Velcro that goes at the top right here. Um, and that's really all you need. Once once these things are, the bars are in here and it's tightened up, I mean, this cannot go anywhere. It's really solid. <clears throat> I haven't set in it myself. Um, I did see another video of a guy who was, I think, I don't know, 200 pounds or maybe more even than he, he laid down on it and it held him even though it's beyond the weight limit. So it's pretty sturdy is all I'm getting at. Um, it's not as long as that would need it to be for me to lay in there or, or uh, my tallest son. So we're gonna probably put the dogs down here and our youngest son up top. He likes it, so it felt fine. It's kind of like sleeping on a cot. Uh, the lower one is, I think, would be less comfortable just because there is webbing right here. Um, you'll see it under there. 
And when you put weight on here, of course, that webbing, you're gonna feel it as like a ridge there, whereas the top one doesn't have that. It's got enough support with the headrests, so it's just a nice smooth fabric under here, kind of like a camping cot. But the lower one, like I say, has those those possible ridges. You might want to put a, a, you know, a mat or something, a pad or something, so we don't feel those. Like I say, we're gonna use it to put our dogs there, um, and so that'll be a good place for them. <clears throat> so I think that covers about everything there is to know about it uh, as far as how it goes together. Uh, I'm gonna leave that vertical post in place. I put a little bit bigger piece of Velcro um, and I'll put one at the bottom too, just because it's out of the way and it's one less thing to have to set up. And then this one here, um, this one also something to point out is that it doesn't completely sit on, well, the van is really dirty in here. <laughs> it doesn't totally sit on that, you know, it hangs off a little. Um, it's not a big deal because it's held to the wall with these poles here, so it's, it can't really go anywhere easily. Uh, but that is probably my only concern there. Um, you could probably put it clear down here, but then you start getting at a, a more severe angle as it goes toward the top. Um, so I don't know if there's a better solution to that. I guess worst case, you could screw it into the platform somehow to keep it from going anywhere. Uh, so we'll see. I'll, you know, once we try it out for the first time, I'll know if that has become an issue. You know, if the kids are falling all over the place. <laughs> anyway, that is all. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. Uh, leave a comment if you have a question about it. Um, well, by the way, so you can buy this with just the upper or the upper and the lower. But you, I believe you have to have the upper one if you're just doing a single single bunk. Um, I, don't, I think the lower one is the one that's optional. If I remember correctly, it's like a hundred bucks more for the second one. You're already spending about 500 bucks. You might as well just get the other one in case you want to use it to store gear and, and whatnot because you can't really add it on later. So I recommend just getting the, the one that has two bunks. Um, and all right, that's about it. Thanks for watching guys.